the latest UK inflation numbers on Tuesday the 14th of November, and then the unemployment and wage growth numbers on Wednesday the 15th will dominate the macroeconomic picture in the week ahead. From consumers' point of view, everybody's going to be looking for a drop in inflation from last month's 3%, or at the very least, an acceleration in wage growth from 2.2% to close the gap between the two and lessen the squeeze on incomes. The Bank of England is going to be watching closely as well, having, I admit, surprised me by plucking up the courage to raise interest rates for the first time in a decade earlier in November, the central bank will be watching wage growth in particular as a possible trigger for further hikes in headline borrowing costs. Deputy Governor Ben Broadbent is already dropping hints that further action may be needed, even if Governor Mark Carney was more soothing by saying further, any further rate increases would be gradual, limited and very much dependent upon how Brexit pans out. Now, for what it's worth, LIBOR, the overnight rate at which banks lend to each other, is 0.79% for 12 months, so that implies just one more 0.25% rate rise in the year ahead. Now, on the company front, we've got a fair few FTSE 100 firms due to release results or trading updates in the week ahead. They include House Builder Taylor Wimpy on Monday the 13th of November, Land Securities, Smiths Group and Vodafone on the 14th, another house builder, Barrett, as well as Experian and Old Mutual on the 15th, life insurance giant Prudential on the 16th brings up the rear. Now, for all of that, the stock that I think is most capable of causing a fuss is British Land, when it reports its first half results on Thursday the 16th of November. The Real Estate Investment Trust, or REIT, owns, manages and develops retail, leisure and office sites in London and around the UK, controlling around 28 million square feet of space. Key properties include Sheffield's Meadow Hall Shopping Centre, the mixed-use Paddington Central Development and Drake Circus in Plymouth. Note that one very high-profile project, the Cheese Grater in London, or the Leadenhall Building, British Land actually sold its 50% stake in that earlier in the year. Now, despite that disposal, the shares haven't really done that well of late, as we can see here. Ongoing market concerns include the impact of Brexit on the UK economy, and the attack on bricks and mortar retailers from online rivals, so this update is a timely one. The first numbers to watch are the occupancy rate and the average lease length. In the last financial year, these figures came to 98% and 8.3 years, both pretty good. Besides that, look out for comments on leasing activity in terms of square footage and how the rents compare to the levels at which net asset value, or NAV, was previously calculated. At the first half stage last year, British Land had leased or renewed 769,000 square feet, with rates up by an average of 11.6%. Total rent rental increases came in nearly 11% above uh, ERV, or estimated rental value, for the year before. Next, move on to NAV, net asset value per share, 891 pence a year ago, 915 pence at the end of the financial year, as we can see here. Now remember that British Land's shares currently change hands for 600p, a 35% discount to NAV, that discount suggests the shares may be cheap. Equally, it shows the market is still worried about what Brexit might mean for UK economic activity and therefore the value of commercial property. Let's see who's right. As a final point, British Land is running a £300 million share buyback programme and it also pays quarterly dividends. The run rate for all four last year was 7.3 pence, or 29.2p for the full year. In the first quarter, British Land declared a payment of 7.52p, Four of those would make for just over 30 pence a share and a yield of 5%. This next graphic here shows the history of the quarterly payments back to 2008. And this final one looks at the annual payments over the past decade, complete with consensus forecasts for the next two years. As you can see, there was a bit of a dip at the time of the financial crisis, but the recovery since has been pretty good and analysts expect further modest increases in the dividend per share. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.